Winter, December, and Christmas are the times of the year when homesteading turns into spending more time indoors. Today we welcome you into our home and want to share with you our Christmas decorations for the year 2020 here on Acorn Hill. Hey guys, it's Louis. Merry Christmas! In today's episode on Acorn Hill, we have decked the halls, trimmed the tree, or several trees in our case, to show you some of the collections we've gathered through the years that make our Christmas and the celebration of the Yuletide season more intimate, special, and definitely joyful. A handmade Christmas element is more than a decorative addition to any of your Christmas trimmings. It's a memory, one that is made with family, celebrating the season, and cherishing time together. This year 2020 is not an exception. It has been a challenging year for most of us, and during the Christmas season, we make sure every year we get more than one element that will be handmade so we could add it to our growing collection every year. Much of our collection comes from mine and Kat's family traditions that have now become part of our own family's annual festivities. Take for example this heirloom nativity set. This was given to us by my mother-in-law as a Christmas gift. Proudly Filipino made this paper mache nativity set of an artisanal quality Filipino made Christmas decoration burdening industry back home. There is no mistake that we have a Filipino household during the holidays as proven proudly by this homemade parol that is hanging on the wall of our home. Growing up, it's our Christmas tradition when I was young for my father to make the frame for the parol. My mother would be decorating it and pasting all the Japanese paper and teaching us how to do the tail for this classic Christmas symbol. And it's a tradition that I do not want to go by the wayside and every year starting this year I have decided to make my own version, my own unique take on the Christmas parol. This year, I have posted this on my YouTube channel and I will put the link on it on the description below and I'll also put a card up on the screen today so that you could see it. Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree. Who doesn't love a good Christmas tree? Well, I do. I have several of them ranging from this artificial one that stands front and center right in the middle of our living room. This eight foot tall Tannenbaum is embellished with our vintage collection of mercury glass ornaments that's been in our collection for close to 20 years. Some of them are from Europe, like Germany, where most of these mercury glass ornaments are made, Austria, Poland, the Americas, and even down from Mexico. Mercury glass, also known as silvered glass, contains neither mercury nor silver. It's actually clear glass mold blown into double walled shapes and coated on the inside with a silver and formula which is inserted into a small hole that is then sealed with a plug. Most of these ornaments were manufactured in Germany. A few manufacturers did for a time try to line with glass with a mercury solution. This practice was discontinued obviously due to the expense and the toxicity of mercury but it helps to explain the origin of the misnomer. First discovered in the early 19th century Germany, mercury glass was used as an inexpensive and tarnish-free substitute for silver in such objects as candlesticks and doorknobs. After briefly falling out of favor, mercury glass reappeared during the 1900s in the form of beautiful Christmas ornaments and gazing bowls, and today most serious collectors concentrate on the antique forms. Another thing that we cherish in our collection is the tinsel tree. This tree was a gift to us by one of our dear friends back when we used to live in New Jersey, back at the turn of the new millennium. We also collect many urns of many different materials and during the Christmas season, this is what we use for our tree base. When artificial shiny aluminum Christmas trees were first created and manufactured in the early 1950s, their appeal was not that they were reusable, environmentally responsible, and easy to store, but that they were sparkly, space-age, and fun to look at. These trees were manufactured from 1958 to 1969 in New York, 
Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and elsewhere. The trees gradually fell out of favor and were relegated to attics, basements, and garbage heaps. This Christmas tree from our Aunt Kay in New Jersey, thanks Aunt Kay, is a perfect addition to our collection because it gives that pop of color and shine that fits the festivities of the season. This tree definitely gives that mid-century vibe and so for this tree, we always make sure that we put minimal colors of blue, teal, and silver with ornaments that come from Germany and again the mercury glass ornaments that we have in our collection. This is situated right next to our Eames chair which is the perfect lounging spot whenever we're having a cup of coffee or just dwindling the day away. Recently, I posted a video on how to make origami stars or origami paper parol. This 50s style tree is decked with stars that are atomic in nature and are mid-century in form. Here's also the thinking behind this tree, so bear with us because this is pretty interesting. Think of the star in the snowflake ornaments as trimming for the tree. Spiky versions in paper or clear plastic definitely adds a graphic punch, while the shimmery specimens made of mercury glass, tin or tinsel, reflect light and impart shine. Back in the day, early trees were of course then lit with candles. The effect of flickering light on a beveled metal ornament would have been quite eye-catching. By the way, check out this tree topper that I got from a consignment shop locally. Highly coveted by collectors, this Dresden ornament is constructed of silver, embossed slightly and is beveled and is made in Germany mostly between the late 19th century and World War I. A good addition to this exceptional tree that we have. Okay, moving right along. On our mini bar, we contain on top two collections that we have. Based on fine old taxidermy, these vintage metal bottle topper deer heads with 3D protruding horns give off that hunting lodge aesthetic perfect for the mini bar. Kat also displays her fine looking African violets from the collection that she's amassed since the beginning of the year. So far we've shown you how we've decked the front of our home, our living room, our loft, even the top of our bar. Now let's take you to the great room. Though people across the globe had been decorating temples and domestic interiors with evergreen floor for centuries, the holiday tradition in its modern form originated with medieval Germans. The idea first spread to England. I think not with Queen Victoria, although she was the queen during that time, but it was Queen Victoria's husband, Prince Albert, who brought Christmas and the Christmas tree into the mainstream in 1848. It is a tabletop tree, about three feet tall, it's made of tinsel, and is one of five different trees that we have in our collection. With a display this winning, who needs a string of lights? Our tree is illuminated with shining spheres, the copper and gold from our collection, from the bobble stage branches to the giant big balls lying beneath. The mix of finishes on the ornaments from mirrored and yellow to matte and deep bronze and copper gives this tabletop tree a rich texture.
For years, we've always wanted a grand and colonial style mantelpiece. When we built Acorn Hill, the home came with basic cookie cutter elements, which in the future and in the years planned on customizing. I'll be posting a feature vlog on how I customize our mantelpiece from its cookie cutter origins to how it is now. But for now, I wanted to show you a collection of kugels. These are German big ornaments that we got from a consignment shop. Reflecting the flickering flames of candles, kugels have a weight and handsome aged patina that other decorations just simply cannot rival. In the early 19th century, glassmakers began to silver the balls, coating their hollow interiors with tin, lead, or silver nitrate to create a metallic finish. Brass caps with rings were added to globes of various sizes in the 1840s, giving birth to the first Christmas tree ornaments, now known as kugels, or balls in German. We hope that you enjoy a brief visit into our home during the holidays. If you happen to stumble onto the channel and you like what you see on Acorn Hill, give us a like. There's that like button that you can tap. There's also the subscribe button. Don't hesitate to do so along with the bell icon so that you can be notified of the many items that we still have coming up. And lastly, to cap off our mini tour of Acorn Hill during the holidays, I want to share with you this carved wooden piece that we got from the Philippines. Filipinos are artisanal wood carvers and this gilded wood carved piece is a fine example of their talent. This piece, a pair of cornucopia, was originally made as a mirror frame. I commissioned a wood carver from Paete, Laguna, a town in Kat's home province that has been known as the center of wood carving in the Philippines. This was inspired by a piece that I saw when we took a home tour of Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's home in Virginia and no better to replicate this piece than the people, the woodcarvers of Paete. In this town, wood carving has been elevated to a fine art form, which is no wonder because the name Paete comes from the word paet, which literally means chisel. And there you have it guys. There's no better example of America as the colloquial melting pot than our holiday season. That's what Acorn Hill holiday traditions will be all about. It's full of our own takes on beloved traditions handed down from generations past and new traditions that Kat and I are developing every year. Christmas time and the holidays remind us of how ever evolving our own culture is, as customs are carried across oceans and over borders by long ago loved ones have been handed down, passed around and relived. And in the spirit of celebrating unique heritage across the globe and around the world, we thank you for being a part of Acorn Hill for its almost first year anniversary. We thank you for being a part of our journey and we thank you for always viewing, always sharing and for subscribing. From Kat and I, from Acorn Hill, this is Louis wishing all of you a safe, healthy and the merriest of all Christmases. Bye bye for now.